course, no, I did not forget about the happenings in England. I just decided uh, only reviewing an FA Cup round uh, on an already busy days on Monday and Tuesday is probably not enough. So I decided to wait for the midweek round of the Premier League as well. Uh, it's probably something I'm going to do a little bit more often uh, now because I realized that Making that many videos all at once on Monday is a little bit of a challenge at times, especially if there's a lot of things happening at work as well. And then, yeah. So I decided to wait. I also did not do the stats cast for the weekend. I will do, I will pack everything into one huge stats cast and you will get that later today as well, probably in the evening sometime. Okay. We have actually, as I said, two competitions to look at. We have the FA Cup um, round four, uh, which I think was really uh, had some quite in interesting game. Although so many said, yeah, the, the matchups don't look all, all the great. I think there was quite some interesting stuff ha happening. Quite a few upsets, almost near upsets, and so on. So uh, that was really good. And then a uh, Premier League round, where the big question is definitely: Is there anyone who wants to get into the top four? Arsenal maybe. So gotta see. We'll talk all about that. But I let's start right at the FA Cup. I know before we start, um if you have not seen my previous review videos, I have actually changed my set setup a little bit. And you know, I always sort the shirts in a way uh, to have like in, in the order that they have changed since we last talked. And it's still one, two, three here, but then I go four, five. And now that I have only 12 shirts, because Chelsea is not playing, um, number six is Crystal Palace, and then I start over here and we go all the way in Spurs uh, in last place. Yeah, it's not the ideal setup. I'm still trying to figure it out, but I'm actually quite pleased uh, how the colors are arranged in this setup. Uh, so that might have been, this might at the moment be the best that I've ever had for a Premier League background. The question is now uh, if I would hang Newcastle and Chelsea or Chelsea up there, how that would look. But you know, Chelsea is at the Club World Cup. I uh, will talk about that in a teeny bit as well. But now we'll start at the uh, <laughs> FA Cup. What was ha happening? We actually started on Friday with a big one. Manchester United, who had two very similar games this week. Uh, completely dominating middle, Middlesbrough have chance after chance. Uh, I, mean, I think there was an open goal miss laid on by Bruno Fernandes that you just, it's just bizarre how he couldn't put this away. Ro uh, Cristiano Ronaldo even missed a penalty. So this is how uh, bad in a way it was for uh, going uh, to put it in the internet. Uh, Jaden Sancho got the goal. But we have this saying in uh, in German in the, in, the, in the German language: goals that you don't make, you end up conceding. That's exactly what happened. Uh, especially, uh, it was a kind of kind of a fluke uh, as well because I think Watmore controlled the ball a little bit with with the hand. Where yeah, it was argued new handball rule seemed, seemed like it should be chalked, chalked off, but it's one one for Middlesbrough. And they hold on up until penalties. And the penalty shootout uh, was very re reminiscent uh, of the uh, penalty shootout that we saw at the Europa League final. It did not go as long, but Middlesbrough starts in first, converting all eight, eight, eight of them, and then Alanga misses the last penalty. Uh, I found it interesting that Cristiano was only number four and Bruno Fernandes was number five seems so un not typical in a way but yeah there's this video of how you do your penalty uh how you sort them that would be interesting uh to do um chelsea before going to the club world cup actually had also a little bit more time the uh, more work than they proper wanted against plymouth although they had plenty of chances they just couldn't convert uh they found themselves down um in the eighth minute, but then uh, Aspilicueta could could, could equalize and then uh, Alonso just in stoppage time of the first half of overtime. Doesn't sound ve doesn't look very 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 convincing if you play against a third tier team and you need overtime. But you know, cup comp competition. This is sometimes how how it goes. Uh, it. Almost, we got the sensation uh, by Kidderminster, the, the lowest side remaining, playing at home against West Ham, having a 19th minute lead. And at the at the beginning, they were actually quite well. But the longer the game went on, uh, the more West Ham got into it. And in the end, it's Declan Rice in stoppage time. 
it's actually a great move getting uh, the equalizer. And then, of course, everyone penalties, penalties, penalties. And again, in stoppage time, Jerry Bone scores the winner for West Ham United. Uh, you know, heartbroken for, for for sure, but we know how it, how, how it is going into a penalty shoot at home. It's not a given by any stretch. Uh, for Lambert's first game for Everton, Ended with a decisive form of win over Brentford, but one has to say that this is not the Brentford anymore that was so flying high at the beginning of the season. Kind of a little bit goal could go going down. Uh, but, you know, uh, getting Everton off to a winning start was probably something really uh, necessary to do. Uh, of the other results, you know, Southampton needing overtime against Coco Country. I just pick out here a few. I mean, this is not all of them. There's six more to left. I think Liverpool also had a little bit more work against Cardiff then than in the Nottingham completely annihilating uh, Leicester 4-1. Uh, that's a big result. Uh, the big standard that I don't have here was of course this boring wood from the fourth year uh, one away to Bournemouth. So uh, that's an interesting one as well. And so we have the, the draw also and even the schedule at the moment. Um, I have to say I'm struggling a little bit to find one that sticks out uh, to Wolves. I mean, I'm looking at Middlesbrough Spurs a little bit because Middlesbrough just uh, took out United. But other than that, um, maybe Southampton against West Ham because uh, those two teams, yeah, that might be the peak bigger round because I don't think a Liverpool against Norwich will do anything. Boreham Wood, you know, the four, fifth tier, need to go to Everton. It's also, it, it just doesn't look right to me how the World Cup comp comp competition should look like. Going on into the Premier League on the same weekend, uh, we also had a one makeup game between Burnley and Watford, a nil-nil draw, a, a game that has, has already been twice postponed. Yeah, <laughs> that happens too, but not, not much that I can talk about there. Uh, but I can talk uh, quite a few things uh, what happened now in the midweek. Uh, a pretty impressive 3-1 by Newcastle over Everton. Yeah, I just said it was good to get Everton off to a good start, but that did not really happen. Uh, Newcastle coming from behind, two own goals starting the game, but it seems that uh, Trippier is really uh, reinvigorating uh, New Newcastle, who actually looked good good for a while and this was a very impressive win actually the most impressive according to the stats hence i'm wearing newcastle for this video um also united as i said have a very similar game to what they had in the cup um first half completely dominant having two goals chalked off uh the one for varan was a little bit off i gotta say but you know um i guess by the rules uh it had to be uh pogba May, uh, gives the lead to you to United. Um, the, of course, uh, Cristiano not starting. It was Cavani because he works harder. I am sure he took this very, 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 very well. But uh, United completely had Burnley in the back, and then they let them back into the game. They only scored one goal. Right after that, Wout Weghorst assists uh, Jay Rodriguez, makes it one-one, and then it was a struggle. And that's again, uh, I'm still, I mean, I, I wish I would have seen at, at this point a little bit more of United under Rangnick. Uh, from what I hear is that uh, performances are maybe not out there, but you can see maybe the seeds of something new is coming. So may, it's maybe a more trust the process thing, but you know, uh, cannot speak more uh, because I have not seen uh, much more of it. Um, we had West Ham getting a win, of course, as well. Um, then City 2 0 over Brentford with uh, Maris penalty and De Bruyne. I gotta say, uh, I thought about it this morning. City are probably the best team in the world at the moment, uh, but they totally leave me cold. Uh, I, if I see City play, I'm not, I don't want to tune in. And it's not that they play badly or whatever. It is just uh, this. There is no excitement there uh, of who's gonna win unless they play a really big, big opponent. Even then, they're more likely than not to win. They very pro proper win, win the Champions League. And also, I love to watch De Bruyne. I think he is one of my favorite favorite players to watch. Uh, but a he is not playing all the time. And secondly, um, well, how to say? The star power of City is probably the one thing. I mean, uh, Guardiola has built a awesome team 
but it's almost starless in many ways. Uh, this is also, I mean, uh, PSG, I like to watch because there's Messi there, there's Mbappé there, there is Neymar there, uh, and it's a train wreck. It's fun, fun, fun to watch. Uh, United maybe is a little bit too bad at the moment, but you know, if they were performing just an inch better, I, I would actually enjoy watching United uh, more than I would watch at, at, at the moment City. Liverpool, I almost always can turn to Tottenham because it's, I, I can identify with the Salas, the Manes, and, and you, know, you know, whatever. There's this power football there. City plays great, but it is, um, it is a, a tad boring. And that's weird because I usually like to watch the best sides, but City is probably the one best side where I really, uh, that completely, I'm, I'm not for, I'm not against, I mean, it also doesn't help with the whole money that is behind them, but uh, it's just, yeah. Was an observation. I think many people uh, feel similarly. Uh, move, moving on to a much more interesting team, which is Spurs. They always have a good headline. Uh, who twice are in the lead, completely undeserved. Southampton outplaying Spurs in their own stadium, and it got it, it got to be said. I mean, uh, already the one one at the half was rather lucky for Spurs. Then they take the lead through Son uh, to, through Son, another player that I love to watch. But um, uh, that was a foul in midfield in the build-up, but it didn't la la last long. Uh, James Ward-Prowse twice with the ident almost identical cross in to Elianusi and then Adams to head it home. And it's a 3-2 win for Southampton, who under Ralf Haselhüttl are really good. And I'm, well, I, I, was, I was wondering, is Ralf Haselhüttl not in a conversation for one of the better jobs just because he lost twice 9-0? Because given what he has at his disposal, I think he's a pretty good coach. And I'm not saying this because I'm Austrian. I just, uh, the pure facts bear it out. I mean, uh, he is doing miracles, I think, with South Southam, especially over the last two, three years where they have been losing uh, players left and right, but he uh, keeps it going. So that will be interesting watching uh, going forward. Uh, a game that I regret not watching was, of course, the 3-3 between Aston Villa and Leeds. I mean, the first half, uh, ended 3-2, but what a game that was. Uh, David James uh, giving them the lead, and then Coutinho uh, it, first scoring a goal, and then two great assists to Ramsey, make it 3-1, but James pulled one back just before for whatever, and then Leeds can equalize, but that must have been an uh, absolutely uh, gorgeous play to watch, and there was also a yellow-red for Villa in there late on. I did watch yesterday Liverpool against Leicester, although I actually wanted to watch more Wolves against Arsenal. Um, I think Leicester hung in there for about 20-25 minutes, where they even had a chance, but other than that, it was all Liverpool. As soon as Diogo Jota put the first goal, goal in, you thought that there, there's a little bit uh, some struggle there, but after that, chance after chance after chance after chance, and Kasper Schmeichel, uh, more or less standing his head and really saving uh, Leicester's skin on many uh, occasions. Uh, I was actually uh, wondering if Mane will be back. No, he was not. It was Salah who came on a little bit later. I gotta say, Luis Dias in his Premier League debut looked like the real deal. Uh, so a great transfer there. I was not so, uh, you know, I didn't know the player, but he looked really, really... Uh, uh, the the real deal, as 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 I say. So uh, there's a loads of options up the front for Liverpool to make it an exciting race. Um, don't think they will catch City though. More or more than that later. So uh, I actually I, I actually thought with the rate that Liverpool are missing chances against Leicester again. It might be that Leicester will snatch a point. No, it was not to be because Jota scores one one more. Uh, Salah was once running. Uh, alone on goal uh, and then seemingly that could have been called a foul maybe 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 not but you know it seemed all right to me uh but yeah liverpool a uh, convincing tool to the win and then arsenal of the top four teams we had united dropping points we had uh spurs losing at home yeah arsenal is maybe the one team who seemed at one point really strong then they didn't now they get a uh, a hard fought win against Wolves, uh, through a goal through Gabriel, who then also got sent off with two ye yellow cards within a minute, which also, uh, no, Martinelli, not Gabriel, Martinelli, Ga yeah, Gabriel, Gabriel, Martinelli, um, uh, I'm the, was weird. It was weird. I mean, there's two ye two yellow fouls within a minute and the first one is not called. It, it just doesn't seem quite right to me. But yeah, Arsenal, 
uh, hanging in there. So let's quickly look at the standings here. You see City, um, yes, a game in hand, it's nine points. Liverpool, let's say they give it, so we have six points and they have the head-to-head, -head, uh, three points. I just don't see City losing that many points. It's not typical for City to do that. Maybe if they feel, but I don't see that. Uh, it's also that Chelsea, despite not uh, playing great, look actually relatively safe at this moment. Whereas the rest is just a crapshoot. I don't think that West Ham will uh, hold on to that fourth spot. I think Arsenal at the moment look the best if, since United and Spurs are dropping points. On the bottom we have also a big development where Newcastle now are out of the regular zone. Norwich is back in. Um, and with so many games in hand, Burnley actually has a shot. But I still think that Leeds definitely have enough points uh, to not get implicated there. Brentford might be coming down, although they have the same amount of points, but uh, Brentford is trending a little bit down. I also think that Everton, there will be, I think the teams, there, there will be three teams that are worse than Everton. I don't see Everton going down, although it does not look pretty. Um, Upcoming rounds. First of all, we have the Club World Cup with Chelsea in there and I will talk I'm not sure if I will watch the final, but they beat Al Hilal uh, through Lukaku goal and now they're meeting Palmeiras in the final uh, This Saturday, so uh, let's see does history re repeat itself so we'll, um, like the last time a European side lost was Chelsea, but maybe uh, Chelsea will actually pull this off, but um, still waiting Palmeiras are a good side, but I have to, I have to say for once, I'm, I will definitely be with Chelsea just because this Divers and Kai for Palmeiras, I just can't understand it. That's despite Palmeiras being a Pulturas team in many ways. But yeah, I'll, I will support uh, Chelsea there. Um, and then uh, next round, I think United against Southampton, Ralph against Ralph uh, is an interesting one. Spurs against Wolves. <sighs> yeah, I think Spurs will need to win this one. Uh, Chelsea Arsenal have been, has been postponed. Uh, other than that, I don't see really a great game uh, out there. I mean, uh, Sunday, late game Leicester against West Ham potentially uh, could be an interesting one. In any case, yeah, Newcastle against Aston Villa, maybe. In any case, let me know what you thought about the happenings in England over the past week. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell. So in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.